There is a fundamental rule in copyright law that copyright protects expression and not ideas. In other words, it protects the form in which the idea is clothed, not the idea itself. This is because ideas belong to all the world and should not be locked away for only one person. Thus, J.K. Rowling has copyright in her Harry Potter books in the way she has told the story, the words she has used, and the order she has put them in, but she does not have a monopoly over the idea of child wizards. Similarly, Shakespeare might have had copyright in the expression of his play Romeo and Juliet, but not over the idea of star-crossed lovers. Related to the idea-expression distinction is the rule that there is no copyright in pure information. Issues that arise with the idea-expression distinction usually involve groups working together in a collaboration, where one person only provides ideas for a project which others express in material form, then that person may not have any copyright interest in the resulting work. This is not the case where someone is a mere scribe. If one person dictates to another their work word for word and that second person writes it down, then they are simply acting as a scribe. The person who is supplying the originality and the intellectual effort is the person doing the dictating, not the person doing the writing. The other issue that can arise is that it can sometimes be quite difficult to separate an idea from the way it is expressed. Where there is only one possible way of expressing an idea, then there is no copyright in the expression, because otherwise no one else would be able to express that idea. Generally, the fewer possible variations there are to express an idea, the less originality the expression will have. A very old example is Kenrick and Lawrence, where the court held that there was no copyright in a sketch of a hand holding a pencil and placing a cross in a box, because there was really no other way to visually depict for illiterate voters how to complete a voting form.